There is a ton of data stored in audio. Now with AI-based transcriptions becoming so powerfully accurate recently, we can finally get to all that data. And it's relatively easy and cheap these days. There are a ton of use cases. Maybe it's recording a video meeting or a phone call that you want to summarize the results, or maybe you want to generate captions for a video, or maybe you have a song and you want to create a sing-along karaoke app. Whatever your reason, that transcription data is important. I built a little microservice that allows you to drop a file in a bucket and it will automatically get transcribed complete with timestamps. So you can use that transcription for whatever you might want to build. Here, let me show it to you in action. So this is the Cloudflare dashboard and I'm looking at an R2 bucket. R2 is our object storage service and there's APIs to do this, but I can also just come into the dash and I can grab a file and drop it here. Now I'm gonna pop over to the worker who, where this code is running and we're gonna watch the live logs and we should see it come through here uh, that it got uploaded and then that it got transcribed. So I've deployed a queue consumer here and in this window you can see the live logs that got uploaded and then it stored the transcription and metadata. Now to make this data available I also provided a named worker entry point which means that I can provide a service to any application that might be interested. Now I happen to have a front-end application here called Careless Whisper. If I do a refresh on this uploads page you'll see that it's there and uh, I could go and I could click into this and it loads it and you'll see that it came in super fast because it's cached. Pretty cool, right? First, let's check out what happens when the file is uploaded. So here in my R2 bucket, there's a settings tab and I'm gonna click into here. And if I scroll down here a little bit, we'll see that I have uh, this event notifications. And you'll see here that it's doing put object, copy object, delete object, uh, and it's gonna go into this uploaded queue. Now, before you start worrying about having to hang out and manipulate things in a dashboard, I want you to know that you can use the Wrangler CLI to set all of this up. And I have put in the instructions in the readme how you build all these things. So with those queue handling notifications, I set up consumer in the Wrangler uh, configuration file here. So see, we've got in the Wrangler configure, I've got queues, consumers, queue, and it's called uploaded, which means I can uh, export a default method, which I'm doing here, called queue. And what happens is the batch of messages uh, comes in here. That's how queues work on the Cloudflare stack. So we come in and we loop through each of these messages. I am taking a look at the action type. And it, you can see here that uh, one of the action types is uh, put object. And that's the one that I'm looking for. It's the one I care about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that by the key that was passed in, right? So the, the key of uh, the R2 entry. I'm going to get a buffer, turn it into a base64, and then I'm going to get the results. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to store those results into the metadata, into the KV metadata. This is my KV here. So we've passed that audio into the whisper, the whisper model, and then I store that in the metadata. Uh, and we store it with the same key, right? So then you'll also see that when I delete it, I make sure that I delete the metadata. So I have the file stored in R2 and the transcription stored in my KV cache. Now, if we take a look back at the R2 settings, you'll see that I can make a bucket public. So I have come in here and I've made the bucket public and I've also set up uh, to my site this chorus policy. You could do that if you want to. Um, so uh, check the notes for more on cores. Let's take a look at how we build this service. So up here at the top of this file, I've exported a named worker entry point named uploader. I've exported that. Um, and now, if you haven't seen this before, it's so cool. Worker entry points support RPC or remote procedure calls, meaning that I can define some functions like I have list upload and get upload and uh, see it's returning the metadata and the URL. And uh, that's how my front end app is accessing it. Right, so let's take a look at that front end app and how it's doing that real quick. So uh, in my configuration here in the Wrangler Toml, if I come in here, you'll see that I have the services. It's the binding, I'm, I'm naming it Outloader. Uh, it's of that service is called Auto Transcriber and the entry point is named Uploader. With that binding defined, I can just use it. So in the Astro app here under this Upload Pages, uh, the main page here where we get the list, I am coming in here and I am just calling list uploads. It's typed, inf.uploader, that's the name of the binding, and it's typed. 
It provides a list of uploaded. And then uh, if I want to get the specific ones, I can come on, come in here and get the use the git upload. So I get pull the git upload and I pull out that URL and metadata. So cool, right? So let's recap. We have a bucket that we can allow anybody to drop a file in and it automatically gets transcribed and that transcription is cached. And I can connect to my internal service from any worker and access it to whatever I want to build, even karaoke machine. Yeah, right, and I can jump around. I don't want to pretend. I know you're not. You thought I was gonna say, I'm not gonna do that. It is such a bonkers time to be a builder, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? What are you gonna cook next with all these Cloudflare stack building blocks? I was thinking that I might take these transcriptions and store them in Vectorize, our serverless vector database, so that I could search and maybe even chat with the recordings. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you real soon.